We are back, and the gentleman next to me is Colin Haynes. We are waiting for Neil Gonzalez to rejoin us. Colin, good afternoon, and welcome again to CWS As It Is. Hey, um, Selwyn. Thank you for having me on the show again. You're quite welcome, my brother. Colin, you are no stranger to CWS As It Is, but for our listeners, our new listeners, can you just give us an idea of who you are and um, why are you here this afternoon? Um, <clears throat> well, once again, thank you for being on the show. Well, originally, I, I originated from Linden, um, Diana. Um, I grew up there in Linden, spent uh, my, uh, my, my high school and primary school days there, and then I migrated to the U.S., where I um, furthered my education, and I was able to acquire um, a Bachelor's of Science in Biochemistry and International Relations. And uh, about three years ago, I um, completed my Master's in Public Health and so the last three or four years have been really focusing on um, development issues, uh, youth development, uh, HIV, health along the lines of chronic um, diseases, non-communicable diseases. And also I've uh, been advocating for um, strong uh, political, social, and um, economic development for young people. You know, this afternoon, you and me are supposed to be talking, uh, discussing uh, health education, a uh, guidance to adolescents and youth perspective. But I would like to mention that both of you participated in the 2015 campaign. Can, can you tell us what was that like, the campaign trail, of course, and how did you get involved? Uh, well, I've always, uh, I've, uh, my political involvement dates back to 2007 as a, uh, a member of the Alliance for Change, where I um, was invited to speak at the um, our first and only um, national youth conference, and so from there on out, I, I have a really vested interest in um, the the politics of Guyana, especially working with our young people. Um, and over the years, I've I've been a constant supporter of uh, the Alliance for Change, and then uh, you know, as of February the 14th, we decided to. Um, uh, have a, a relationship with the a partnership for national unity, and so that was welcome. And um, as one who um, believed that um, our country really needed to experience a revolution, a, a change of sort in all different sectors, I, um, along with many other youths, jumped on the campaign trail, and it was a wonderful experience being able to um, uh, being able to, to to get on board and really tour different parts of our country, understand some of the issues that our Guyanese people are facing, and be able to give input as well. I felt that this was something that, um, that, that I needed in, in my life. That's, that's Nia just joined us. Go ahead, Colin. Yeah, so I felt that, that that was something that was needed. And, um, you know, over... One of the things I've been really um, adamant about on the campaign trail was getting out there and getting involved, speaking to them about um, social issues such as health and education, mm -hmm. um, how do we involve them in the political scope of things, mm -hmm. and um, how do we um, address the lack of jobs and creating economic opportunities for them. All right. Um, Nia's just joined us. I want to give her a chance. Nia, uh, I asked Colin to tell us who he is. So I'm going to ask you the same question. Tell us a little bit about who you are and why, why you're here this afternoon. Um, I am Nia Gonzalez and I usually say that I'm a body politician. I'm a young mother and a wife. Um, the reason I am here this afternoon is because I want to share with the young people um, a, a broader spectrum of them, the international stage and um, the Selwyn Collins show conference um, is going to give me that opportunity to share with them uh, some of the things that are affecting us as youth and as young people, young women and young men in today's society. You and, uh, and Colin are here to talk about health matters and um, health education, you know, guidance to adolescents and youth perspective, uh, guidance to adolescents and also youth perspective. But what I asked Colin 
uh, was how did you guys get, how did you get involved with the campaign and why? Um, I got involved in the campaign because one, I'm a member of a political party, the People's National Congress Reform. And um, why I've gotten involved was because there was a need for young people on the campaign trail. And um, I felt that my voice would, my voice and the things I have to say would um, propel young people to get out there and vote, um, not only for change, but to vote for some, someone or something, a movement that would bring Guyana to where it should be in, in the today, in the international arena, in, in today's global market. Neil, yeah. with, at, you, you said you were a member of the youth arm of the People National Congress. At, at what time yes. did you realize you wanted to become or get involved in politics? Um, since I was about 17, 18, yes. And what inspired you? What inspired me, my inspiration came from the fact that, you know, you, if you're a part of a political party or a part of um, a political space, you'll be able to get your ideas and your initiatives across to, across to a lot of people and easier because everything is run on politics. Um, whether it's humanitarian work, whether it's the work in the church youth group, there's somebody that you need to report to. There's something political pushing it and, and some political is funding that movement. So I believe that the, the political space would, would give me that, that um, opportunity to do whatever work I want to do. And that is um, humanitarian work. And what was it like? What was it like for you on the campaign trail that they, they when uh, working alongside youth from the AFC um, party, what was that relationship like? And well, how did you benefit from it? Um, at first, <laughs> I had my reservations about the AFC youth, I, and I think it was natural. But um, after I started working with them, um, I believe that most of them shared the same ideas. And we had some pretty good working relationships. I've not gotten the opportunity to meet all of them. I've met Colin. Um, we, we spoke at a few public meetings together. And um, the things that we shared on those platforms were from young people with, with ideas and ideas that they wanted the people to hear. Mm -hmm and ideas that they wanted to be implemented in the government or in the running of the country. So mm -hmm. it was a good working experience. And, and, and Colin, what was that like for you, working with uh, youth from the PNC party? Um, I, I think it was a, a very enriching experience. Uh, certainly, you know, of course, when there's any kind of uh, relationship or marriage, there's always going to be uncertainties, but I thought that we complemented each other very well. I thought that what we brought in terms of our personality, in terms of our beliefs, it was compatible and there was a, a very good match. Um, and, and from this, I, I really made a lot of great friends, you know, like Nia Gonzalez and Christopher Jones and James Bond and Malik Ramsey and so forth. And I think it really sets the stage for us um, to unite on a common purpose since that both you know political parties we we would have been on, on 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 different sides and we were forced to work with each other i think now um we are now under one branch which is team Guyana, team unity mm -hmm. working for the betterment of our young people mm -hmm. as you as you campaign <laughs> what was one thing among the youth that stood out for you what what made you felt uh feel uh, you were on the right track, that you were, you were happy that you were part of this campaign? Um, for me, the, the youths wanted to be heard. Um, that's one thing that stood out for me. They wanted a Guyana that they can, proud, they can boast about. Um, most of the youths that were part of the campaign were 23 years and less. 
And um, the only government that they've known and they've had the experience of is the people, people, PPP, PPP. And um, they weren't doing anything for the young people. So the one thing that stood out for, for me was that the young people of Guyana wanted something more from the government. And they're going to question that government and they're going to look for answers. And if the answers aren't favorable, I am going to warn the government that I'm proud of, the AP and UFC, that they're not going to go back there if the answers aren't favorable for young people. That's that's what I am hearing even now. And then I realized that the youths have become the wiser set of the um, population and they're going to ask questions and they're, they're going to look for answers. Mia, while I have you on screen, as a young woman, how, how would you describe your pre and post election uh, experience. What was it like? Well, let me be a little bit more specific. Pre elections, what were some of your, your hopes, some of your um, expectations, some of your anxieties? And post elections, how would you describe this, Nia? Um, some of my hopes uh, pre election were one, youth involvement, two, um, women involvement. Youth involvement is still lacking. Um, I, it's just about 38, 37, 38 days since the new government has been in office. Uh, uh, we don't have youth in our parliament or national assembly. We don't have them in the cabinet. And I'm not sure if we're going to have them on the state boards, but I'd hope that you know, young people and young people interests can be heard and they, they can be involved on the state boards, um, seeing as they're already not in the National Assembly and they're not in the cabinet, varying reasons, which I understand and I stand by my president and the cabinet um, for the reasons behind not having the young people on the state, um, in the National Assembly and in the cabinet. Um, two, this, there's still a need for more women being involved in the National Assembly. In the National Assembly, I think there, there are about 10 or 12 women of the 36 seats um, that the APNU, AP and UFC occupies in the National Assembly, 36 seats inclusive of the, the technocrats. And those are persons who cannot vote in the National Assembly. And um, there are two senior ministers who are females, uh, I think they should have been more. I think that we have lots of competent women and we have competent young people who could have filled those gaps. But I said, I still stand by my president and the decision that he has taken to not have the young people involved at, at this period in, the, in our country's history. And what, I do understand the period. What are you hearing among the youths in, in your arena and, and about their place and role in Guyana's development? I didn't get the last part clearly. What, what are you hearing among the youth, in your arena, among the youth, among the young women, and um, well, especially the young women, about their, their role in the development of Guyana? Um, the young women, the young people are disappointed. Um, the young women are disappointed that their, their gender is not you know, predominant, and it's been like that for quite some time. Um, they think that equality is still lacking. I do understand that. Um, and they're even saying that um, some of them, some of my friends, my peers would say, this isn't no change, this is exchange, and I voted for change. Um, but it's just like the PPP has just given the mantle to the APNU to do the same thing. But I'm asking them to be patient and be a little bit more, be a little bit more questioning. I'm not going to stop you from questioning what's happening in your country, a country that you pay tax in, but be patient with, with the new government. I'm not telling you to give them a long rope because five years is, five years is just around the corner. And uh, we need to see change in the, yeah, and we need to see change in the way things are done changing the way things are run in this country. And, and but this, yeah, basically ahead. what I'm hearing from the young people is that 
they're disappointed and they voted for change and, and, and they wish to see that change and colin uh, what are you what are you hearing in your arena and what and what are you saying to those that uh, as, as nia said be patient what are you telling your your peers Colin, are you still with us? Are you still, Colin? Did you hear my yeah, question? Sorry about that. I think. Okay. Did you hear the issues? All right. I was I was asking you, what are you hearing among your peers, and like Nia, who is telling them those that are disappointed to be patient. What are you saying to your your friends? Well, first of all, I. It's 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 very difficult um, to to inspire. We we had a great momentum coming into the election um, as to uh, you know the youths and having involvement and um, our senior leaders were promised that they were going to be involvement at all levels and certainly that um, was not the case. I still stand by the administration's um, decree and um, the the platform. Um, or the blueprint that they have for developing Guyana. However, I hope and, and I shared with them that even though we may not be involved at a parliamentary or at a cabinet level, uh, there is other areas within the ministries, whether it's directors or um, whether it's coordinators, managers, or even at lower levels that we may be able to um, be part of and including state boards as well where we will be able to um, have a voice and be able to um, to learn as well. I think um, it's, um, it's uh, instrumental that in this change that we're creating, that we create sustainable um, measures of leadership. And uh, the most sustainable people are young people because they have age on their side that they can continue. So my hope is that um, we will be groomed into areas where we're able to be understudies of the of our superiors, of our senior uh, ministers and um, parliamentarians, and we'll be able to move forward from there. What do you and, think? Uh, what do you think you're not hearing? Because Nia and, and I've heard this while I was in Guyana recently from some of the young folks that some of them are disappointed, they're disgruntled, whatever. But the question is, what is it you're not hearing? You you have a lot of faith in the administration. In our newly elected president, Nia, the same thing. But what is it you're not hearing, uh, you and the other youth are not hearing, that are creating this sort of anxiety? What do you think should be told to you? Or what do you think should be said? Colin, are you with us still? Nia, you want to take a stab at this? If I may, I think... Um you know, getting us involved at each level, and that is from the consultation stages, like letting us know process by process what is happening, what are the plans the, the administration um, have for young people, they have for the youth, where, where are they going to put the youth, um, where are they going to put them to not necessarily govern, but where are they going to put them to, to sit, where are they going to put them to have a say, those are some of the things that the young people would want to know. They would, would like to, to get a, a ball by ball coverage of what exactly is happening. Don't do things in a vacuum and then, you know, bust a big bomb on us like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And we've never been involved in the consultation stages. So I guess that that's what I'm hearing from my peers that are making them very disgruntled is the fact that they're, they're not knowing what's going on from the, the minute that the president or the cabinet thought about it. And you, 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 do you believe that that is, um, that is fair or reasonable yes. for them to hear all the plans from the beginning? Yes. Mm -hmm. You, I want to switch a little to, to health, health matters, health education. You, you believe strongly, Nia, in sexual reproductive health education in schools. It's so important to you. Because um, whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or we, we do not accept it, our young people 
both male and females are having sexual activities or they're performing sexual activities since the age of 12 and even at 11. I would go as, as young as saying 10. And um, I don't think it's something that we could prevent in terms of telling them not to have sex because they can talk to them weary that you should not have sex at the age of 11, you should not have sex at the age of 12. But these young people are exposed to the age of the internet and there are things on the internet inclusive of pornography um, that they're going to be curious about, they're going to look at, they're going to read stuff and they're their curiosity would send them to experience it. Uh, there, there are lots of leverage that the parents place on them. They get to go to all these different parties. Your mother or your father not watch man in you. You can do whatever you want at the party or after the party. Mm -hmm. But um, what's, what should be implemented is a sexual education class or a health education class where we can teach the students about the use of, the importance of the use of condom, the effects of having sexual activities, and the effects go far beyond HIV, AIDS, and teenage pregnancies. It, it can affect them physically, psychologically, emotionally. Emotional in the sense, um, they're thinking about it, they're, they're affected by it, they can't perform effectively in school. So yes, I believe I'm, I'm strongly, uh, I'm a strong believer in sexual ed education classes or health education classes in the schools. I remember going to school and I did some amount of health education classes and just about secondary school, I, that, that class was uh, done away with. I believe that we should um, teach our young people the importance of sexual health, sexual reproductive health, and the importance of using condoms or even abstaining and the effects of having sex. Mm -hmm. and, and Colin, this is also an area of concern for you. What are some things you hope young people understand about sexual reproductive health? Well, I think that there must be a, a level of, um, there, there must be a, a blueprint involved and it needs to start from the basic level. So it needs to start from our school. I think we need to review the health and family life education course, um, which is age, um, in terms of um, what age group is going to bring um, certain things like sexuality, sexual reproductive health, um, which should start somewhere around primary school because giving um, the lack of exposure, young people now are, are, are exposed to these things at a very young age. Um, and, and in addition to that, I think that we also need to um, really uh, just not look at um, sexual reproductive health in a vacuum. And when I say a vacuum, not only um, teaching or instilling the educational knowledge, but also um, instilling behavior change. I think that's something that we need to work on. And so there needs to be reinforcements. And um, at some point in time, I think that we need to make um, uh, um, sexual reproductive health services available to um, to young people, you know, at a younger age, such as condoms and so forth. Mm -hmm. what, I also, go ahead. I also like to add to that. I think um, every year at the University of Guyana, we have thousands of um, graduates in social work, but yet there are n little to no social workers in our in our secondary schools and even in our primary schools. I believe that. Um, Having someone to speak to about what is bothering you emotionally, so someone to mentor you, having a peer educator, um, it can help the students to develop some sort of responsibility for their their sexuality, their their health, their body, and um, they can be able to function better in, in the schools. They can be able to say no is no, say when they, they mean no. Um, they, they can be able to responsibly um, and consciously decide to have sex. 
So I believe um, the implementation of social workers as part of the staff in our school system is important. And I would like the Minister of Education, uh, Dr. Rupert Rupnarang, to pay keen attention to, to that, you know, have a on-staff social worker. Colin. I agree. I agree with Nia um, on that because when children go to school, it's um, it's not only um, we must not look about only about certain. I think we are having um, some issues with Colin's connection. Nia, you want to jump in here for a minute, please? Yeah. Um I, I believe I'm going to think what he's going to hope that we have telepathic minds, you know. <laughs> but I believe that he was trying to say that when students go to school, there are a lot of baggages that they're coming from their homes with, from their, their, their family circle. They're going to school with lots of things on their minds. And I can tell you, you know, from experience that I've experienced uh, um, several things I've been to school with on my mind. I've... I never wanted to commit suicide, but you know I, I've been troubled emotionally by what was going on in my home circle, and there was nobody there for me to talk to. Our teachers are not our teachers are not really welcoming. Sometimes they they often behave they're fed up because they work for little to nothing, so they just go there, give you some notes, you write those notes, and you can't really open up to them. So someone who, who, who's trained in social work, who's trained in how to deal with um, somebody psychologically would be a great asset to our school system. Mm -hmm. um, if you had the, the, the ears of the Minister of Education, what would you like to tell him? Um, the Minister of Education, what would I like to tell him? I would like to tell him um, make extracurricular activities a part of our curriculum, like sports, um, debating competitions, dance competitions, um, cooking competitions. Make it a part of our curriculum. Um, it gives the student extra time on their hand to focus on something other than their boyfriends or girlfriends. Um, also, get the social work in each school in Guyana, if, if it's possible. Uh, also, um, give the students, not necessarily incentives, but when they're graduating or when they're stepping up in a class, you know, give them an award for best improved student, an award for best um, attendance, an award for something. It helps them to it, it propels them to push forward and it propels them to do better at the end of the semester or in school all through the year. Um, Colin, you are, you're, with your background in public health, tell us how do you plan to use your experience and knowledge to contribute to the development of Guyana? I think Colin is not there. Are you there, Colin? All right, let's, um, let's continue and hopefully he'll be able to join us. Mia, I want to go back a little bit to, to uh, pre-elections. What, what did it feel like the first time you realized that it was going to be a new government? Um, the first time I realized that there was going to be a new government, I was overwhelmed. I, I cried. I rejoiced. Um, the reason why those things happened was because I've had no other experience but the, the PPP 23 plus years, and it was not necessarily the best experience. Um, the things that was said on the AP and UAFC platform, I was looking forward to them, looking forward, I am still looking forward to them eagerly. And I have the, the highest confidence in, in this new administration that those things will be done. I'm not saying that all of it can be done in this five-year period, but it will be done. And, and I'm still looking forward to the change that 
I heard about that I even spoke about on the platform. Um,